So before we get started uh, with the demo, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of context around what you're going to see. Uh, quick show of hands, how many folks were able to see the keynote presentation yesterday and Tom Rizzo's demo specifically? So the first thing that he showed was business connectivity services. And he walked through a, a scenario that was similar to what we're going to show you here, but we'll show you a lot more than that and we'll go into a little bit more detail. So he was working with Contoso and some sales and marketing uh, data. So for this particular example, we're going to work with the same company, but Contoso has chosen to deploy both SharePoint Server 2010 and Office 2010 for their client desktops. And what they want to do is basically take data that exists in their external uh, ERP and CRM system and surface that data for their sales folks in SharePoint as external lists, but also make that data available to their guys who are often out in the field and maybe working either partially connected or disconnected, but even when they're connected, they've got pretty slow connections back to the corporate network. So exposing the data in SharePoint Workspace, in Outlook, and in Word. So we're gonna break the demo into three different portions. The first portion um, is similar to what Tom showed, but we're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna start in SharePoint Designer, no pre-existing information, we're gonna define what a customer external content type looks like. We're gonna save that up to SharePoint. We're gonna create an external list to surface it in the browser, and we're gonna connect that all the way down to Outlook. And we're gonna do this in less than 10 minutes. So super quick to get up to speed and build a simple solution that uh, empowers your users to get at this data in multiple locations. The next phase of the demo, we'll start with an existing list. We'll work with products this time and we'll showcase the InfoPath Forms technology. We'll show you what a customized uh, InfoPath form looks like in the browser, and then we'll connect that list down to SharePoint Workspace, walk through some of the capabilities of SharePoint Workspace itself, and show that same form uh, rendered there for the users to interact with. And then the final phase of the demo, we'll go through a pretty simple sales quote scenario. We'll start in SharePoint in a document library that contains external data columns, and we'll create a new sales quote and we'll fill out information in Word, taking advantage of content controls to pull data in from our uh, external system. Okay, so let's jump into the demo and switch over to our demo machine. So we're gonna start off looking at our Contoso sales and marketing site. It's basically started life as a, a SharePoint uh, team site. There's no special features enabled behind the scenes. Um, we've customized the homepage uh, to have our product logo and some basic content here, but there's no magic happening behind the scenes. So we'll switch over into SharePoint Designer and we'll open up the site here and we see the basic information about the site itself, but we see this new option on the left uh, navigation pane called external content types. Well, we seem to... All right, there we go, great. Um, so you see this new option on the left navigation pane called uh, external content type. And if we click on that, we see the existing list of ECTs that have already been published up to our SharePoint uh, shared service repository. And these are shared uh, for users uh, of this site and of this farm, uh, provided that they have access to it. So you can control security over who has access to uh, be able to use these. So we want to go and create a new one. So we'll click on new external content type uh, up in the ribbon. And I apologize for folks at the back, you're not going to be able to see some of the text here, but all the sessions are being recorded. So uh, take my word for it in the short term and you can go and watch the recorded version afterwards. Um, or you can just move a few rows forward if you want. So we'll, give, we'll start off by giving uh, our ECT a name. So we want to work with customer data. And the next step is to choose the office item type that uh, this data maps to. And so here we see the different uh, office item types, appointment, contact, task, and post. Here we're working with customers, so we're gonna go and select contact. And then the, the last step here is to begin defining the connection to the external system. So we click on a link and we see, uh, we don't have any existing connections here, but we can go and add a new connection. And the first step in doing that is defining the type of connection that we want to work with. So we see the .NET type, uh, WCF or web service, or the SQL connection. 
So here we want to connect to a SQL backend, and we're going to type in the name of our, both our database server and the name of the database itself, and we're going to go ahead and connect using the currently logged on user. So we click on OK, and at this point, SPD is going to go out to our backend data source and retrieve information about its structure. So here, if we expand the database, we can see the list of tables that we have in the back end. And if we select customer and drill down here, we can actually see the list of fields associated with uh, that table in the back end. If we right click on the customer table itself, we see a few different options. The first one is creating uh, all of the options. And this is available for databases because we can infer uh, a lot of information about it. We can infer how to read an item, update an item, create an item, et cetera. If you're working with web services or other data sources, it's more difficult for us to infer that information, so we give you the options to define exactly what method we need to call on that web service, for example, to go and update a particular item. We also have an option down here which allows you to define associations between your data. So you may have an association between a, a customer and an order, for example, so once you've created those external content types, you can go and define how they're connected. So for purposes of this demo, we're going to go and create all of our basic operations, and this is going to spawn basically a wizard to walk us through the process. On the left-hand side of the screen, we see the structure of our uh, customer table, so all the different fields here. On the right-hand side, we see information about how we want to map that information and surface it within Office and SharePoint. And then on the bottom of the screen, we see a few errors and warnings, basically guidance to help walk us through the process and let you know what needs to be done in order to uh, be able to save this information as an external content type. So we're going to begin by mapping a few fields here. We're going to start off by mapping first name in the back end to first name uh, in office. And we'll do the same thing for last name. We'll map that to last name. Email address, we'll go and map that. And what you're seeing on the right here is the list of fields that are filtered based on the contact item type. So you don't see things that make sense for appointments or tasks. We scope down to just those uh, that work with contact. So we'll map a couple of other fields. Occupation, we'll map that to job title, uh, company name, and uh, the first line of the business address. So we're not going to map all of the fields here just for in the interest of time, but we'll show you a little bit later in the demo um, what happens to those fields that we didn't map. Last step of the process is an optional step where I can define some additional um, filters on my external content type. We'll skip that, we'll just click on finish, and SPD, you can see on the right here, has automatically generated those operations for us. So we now know how to create, update, and delete a customer in the backend system. We know how to read a single customer as well as a list of customers. So we'll go ahead and click on Save, and this is going to push the information about the ECT that we just defined up to SharePoint, and it's going to save it in the Business Data Connectivity Metadata Store, where all the external content types live, and that'll make it available to users uh, in our farm. So that process is complete. 